This next match review comes to us from Septi Rex, not to be confused with Septic Touch, uh, the Dredge Teachable, uh, has uh, 1,200 hours, 1,208 to be exact. Uh, so a little bit past that point where I expect people to have good macro and micro sense uh, in Dead by Daily. It's the basics of those things. So you got that down. You're playing the Xenomorph, the Xenomorph, who happens to be the character that I play, wrote the guide for and all that wonderful stuff. Um, you're on the game, the Meatpacking Plant, which is a fairly good map for the character, where it's usually a uh, map that's pretty bad for most characters in Dead by Daylight. The Z-Morph can shoot over the pallets and has a lot of sneaky shots they can get um, in a lot of these loops. So actually, despite the fact that it is a typically a very bad killer map, pretty all right for you, actually. So take, take, a, take a look at your hands and your bikes. Okay, so your add-ons are right. So with Z-Morph, you run two of three add-ons. Either Lambert Star Map, Emergency Helmet, or Self Destruct Bolt. Doesn't matter which combo of those. You can do you can do double turret, you can do turret, bolt, doesn't matter. Basically, any of those work. Uh, even without bamboozle, self destruct bolts just go to. Um Your build's kinda like the uh, incoherent, I think would be the word. So you have throwing an eruption, which, you know, is aiming more towards like a kick uh towards a pressure perk build. But then the other two perks are totem pressure. So like, throwing only works really well if you're running a full like kick pressure build. Um, even then throwing is kind of underwhelming because it's cooldown so long. So the fact that the rest of your build doesn't even like have anything to do with kicking besides eruption is kind of risky. Also play thing in general on Z-Morph is kind of like eh. Because the motion sensors that are in the flame turrets go for 41 meters and don't get interrupted by anything, undetectable, oblivious, anything. So as long as they're putting up the turrets, they're going to hear you coming anyways. So yeah, they may just end up leaving the totems up. In that case, they deny your pentimento. So yeah, would, I, the, the TLDR for this is uh, lean one way or the other. Either commit to full totem or commit to full kick. But you're kind of doing half and half, and it's going to create some building coherence. Let's see how the game goes. Get into a tunnel right away. Oh, I always have a hard time audio balancing this. Are these because so many different audio levels? You get him right away. You're like your bolt would be good either way, just because you would be able to catch up quicker. If you just fall after him. Could have lunged and hit that. Send clips in. This isn't clip review. This is match review. So it's uh, it's meant to help people get better at the game of Dead by Daylight. So if you have a match that's really close, like one gen or less, or a match you outright lose, that's what this is for. I don't do like just like watching people's you know clips or matches because like to, to to be frank, I just don't have time to. Like with the daily upload situation, I gotta like keep on editing, which I have to do tonight. Oh, that's unfortunate. You should hit this, though. Yeah, there you go. So I don't have time to watch people's clips all the time. Because I'm already, like, watching and editing stuff for the day uploads all the time. Well, like, I, I always appreciate that people love Xenomorph and enjoy Xenomorph. And it makes me happy. But, like, I don't know. I'm already watching a bunch of people and friends stream, having to make and edit daily content all the time. It's just, you know, it's just like I'm only a, I'm a finite person with finite time in this world. God forbid I want to like, you know, spend time with Liz or like play a video game that I like that isn't DVD every once in a while, you know? There's not enough time. Unfortunately, yeah, Deli. I do like the option that, like, hey, I don't know necessarily where people are. Yeah, this is a this is a criticism I give a lot in almost every Xenomorph match review. Is I would not recommend just like sitting there and just like staring at the footfalls. Because finding the nearest control station gives you two crucial pieces of information. If you pop out and they're within 12 meters, you get killer instinct. So in that case you know exactly where they are. If you pop out and you don't get killer instinct, you, that that tells you that the footsteps went the other direction. So either way, you have a vague idea of where they went. So kind of like just like hanging out and just kind of like looking at them. It's kind of 
Waste of time, mostly. And mash time is gen time. We also went to the wrong floor. Yeah, it's kind of similar to Whisper there. That's a good, that's a good comparison. I don't know why she did that. Yeah, just elbow drop her. No? Oh. Now she gets lithe. Oh, you got the bug! No! At this point, it's just a feature. The moment that you leave and go chase one of these people, one of the other two are gonna hop back on this gen. So you shouldn't even stop to kick this here. Might as well just kept chasing. You don't even have anybody to chase right after. So they're probably just gonna hide in one of these rooms and hop right back on it. In that case, why'd you waste the time on it? Oh, you have eruption, never mind. I'm an idiot. Hang on me. That's right. Ace broken, Dally. Oh, I'm an idiot. Ignore me. It was, a, it was an eruption play. My apologies. Forgot you had that. Just hit him. Yeah, go ahead and set up your eruption right now. Like that. Up you go. So Bill would be death threat coming off of this. Never ever break these doors. Never break these doors. One of the greatest things about Gideon Me Packing Plant, actually in favor of Killer, is the fact that because of these breakable walls, until they do the gens, they end up in these like tiny little like timeout corners that like they can't do anything about. And it very much limits what survivors can do. Uh, when you break these doors, it gives them more freedom of movement to go in and out on the gen and also in and out to extra loops. Don't break these doors. Yeah, like this, this straight ahead is exactly why you don't do this. Like what you just did is exactly why you don't do this. Because now, like, there's this little drop down and that's it. And the drop down only leads to an L wall to you all, which is extremely weak. So you're typically good. But now you've extended the loop into a, a safe pallet. That you have to kick. Whereas they didn't have that before. That's exactly why you don't do that. So now you've made that loop. That was relatively weak. Now actually helpful. Because you've opened up another loop right next to it. Why not do it? I will say this, if you don't have any hooks that necessarily synergize with four hooking the team, there's no reason to. You don't have to four hook people. It, it'll get you nice guy points with the survivors, but like, other than that, like... Just hook the same two, three people. She's break- she's breaking her totem right behind you. She's stuck in a- in, I understand that you're like, okay, well I want the pentamento value, but like, also like, she's stuck in an animation. Right? Which means that... <laughs> she, her greeting at that close to you means you're probably just gonna get a free hit on her. Why not just take it? Hey Brad, it's good to see you, friend. Hope you do well in the day zone. Yeah, that- that's- that bug's really annoying right now. But flashbangs always make noise. I kind of overestimate your tail attack length a little bit, I've noticed. You continue to chase this Allen despite the fact that somebody just unhooked her right next to you, which means you're just going to let them get the free heal and get right back on that zone without any sort of contention. You build for that, what'd you make? You can shoot through this. This, this right here, this forklift, it has no, no uh, collision in the middle where the seat is, so you can just shoot through it. So you should just do that. Definitely kick this. But wait till eruption comes off cooldown! You didn't look! You didn't look at your perk! That's my item! <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that build. On Vecta in particular now, but yeah, I've, I've seen that build. What are you checking lockers for? 
Alright. Game review? Yes, I do match reviews every Monday to help people improve the game of Dead by Daylight. Oh, that. There's just tail attack there. there. Homie, just tail attack her or break the pallet. Why are you just looking down? Just hit her. You're avoiding it as if, like, you getting blinded means the Z-Morph just blows up. Just hit her. You have the tail attack. Oh, no. Oh, that's so tragic. That's rough, buddy. That's rough. Mm -hmm. Always the flashlight, of course. Yeah, I mean, you also made on a gen somewhere. Drinking. I'm not saying this player in particular, but I always find it very funny. I mean, like, a lot of the people that I hear go like, "Bro, Trier's gen rush so much," and then like they actually send in match reviews, and I see them doing just like extremely time and efficient things. Okay, so if you're in this situation, because I know exactly what you just did. When there are two floor maps, when there are two floor maps, let's see, 250 or 652. When there are two floor maps, the shorter tubes go to the first floor because the tunnels must always be below the map, meaning they will always be below the lowest floor, whether it be the Forgotten Ruins dungeon, whether that be the meatpacking plant, whether it be Midwitch, RPD, tunnels must always be below the bottom floor, whatever that happens to be. So the short tubes go to the first floor, the long tubes go to the second floor. This is short. This is a very, very short tube. Look at how small that connection is. That means it goes to the first floor. You were wanting to punish people up here, which means you should have went to the one behind you that had the longer connection. That's how you tell. But most Xenos are like panicking and going so fast that they just don't look <laughs> and they just go to the wrong one all the time. Um, the bad habit that I see almost in every Xenomorph player. Look at it. Look at the length. Do you just crawl through air? Yes. Don't think about it too hard. Don't think about it too hard. Usually I would not recommend that, but you're setting up eruption, so that tracks. Good job listening correctly. Play a killer. Currently I'm doing match reviews. So, so I'm not actually playing the game right now. So a mod could find that that would be ideal. Hopefully you're doing well today though. Why do you just leave that guy? I bet you're fine. You were totally fine. If you saw Xenomorph on the screen and you're like, yeah, Brand's playing. Totally fair. It was only for Xeno? No, they're for anybody. I try to watch a lot of different character mains and um stay up to date on characters so I can review as many people as possible. But Xenos are the best. Obviously, that's what I know the most. You lose people really easily. Here, hold on. If they're not present, I got it. Just let me look away. There you go. Why do you keep leaving this guy? You keep starting and ending chase with this ace like 14 times. Like, you gotta commit to something. You gotta do something. So I'm going to review my Vecna match one day. Sure. I do this every Monday. So as long as you submit it before the Monday stream starts, I'll do it. Also, there's like rules that are just like, you know, this is meant for people that are struggling, trying to figure out why they're not winning a lot of their games. Like, so the games have to get down to one gen. So it's not like an ego submission, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there. Like it all lists it before you submit. Yeah, you just like aren't committing to any chase because especially when eruption is like your only active slowdown right now you got to commit to a down or else you just don't give value otherwise those are just dry kicks you got to commit to a down here once again ah. william that hurt just pounce my hand you are way out of range for that like I said, I think you need to learn your tail attack range. You are consistently tail attacking way outside 4.8 meters. 
And since you suffer a movement pe speed penalty every time you miss, that's actually pretty brutal to be doing that constantly on the character. P69. Well, now you gotta leave it. Mike, well, now, yes. You hit the funny number. You always were. Oh! See? That's why that kick didn't matter. It was like. I just stuck it. Thankfully, she's dead. You just, like, don't want to chase this ice for some reason. I'm not sure why. Like, you keep stopping, starting and stopping chase with them. Really odd. Not sure why you're doing that. Ooh, the classic, the classic, the classic! Go for it, go for it! Moment of truth! Oh, good job. Good job. Since I was born? Since you were born? I don't I don't think, I don't think since you were born. What's again? Don't break these doors. Very trustworthy. Yeah. The problem is that like, that's why macro sense is super important, DBD, because like you really need to learn your uh control stations as well. Like you just keep consistently coming out on the wrong floor. You've done it like four or five times this game. Why are you not going back to hook? Yes, short dude. Short dude. There you go. Yeah, you, that's, you can swing in, like, frustration, but, like, that's a skill issue. And I do mean that respectfully. Like, you, you are fucking up. That's not, like, Xenomorph's so stupid. That's, that's you, that's you, like, not knowing something. You're failing a knowledge check right now. And you're getting mad about it. You're failing a knowledge check. Like, it, I already explained it, but, like, that's not the game's fault. That's, that, that's your fault. And you keep passing by the right one, I've noticed, in that corner in particular. Ah, well. Stop attacking me. Why are you attacking me? What? You have my attention. What? what do you want? Like, I didn't think I'd get this far. One to watch, too? Okay. There you go. Alright, he's playing the Xenomorph. Or they're playing the Xenomorph. I don't know what their pronouns are. They're playing the Xenomorph. They're playing the Queen skin. That's the one Dad plays all the time. At least the same character. I usually use the Grid skin. Looks like that's some balance landing. It's a really good perk. You probably have balance landing. You're a cat. Was laying on your feet. Do you get the speed boost after too? Yeah, you ideally should be going for Bill here. But I'm, I'm glad you're finally chasing Ace. Been leaving chase with them the whole game. Yeah, it's just hard, especially when they crash that one. Don't waste too much time on this. Yeah, I would just W round until you line up a shot. Hey, Flash. Okay, hold on. All right, see you, Glycopod. When you're in a situation like this, sorry, having a hard. Okay, I'm just gonna put you down because I need to actually. I love you. That's my shirt. Can I have that back? That's it's attached. It doesn't come off. Well, it does, but like not like. First match for you. This is the third one. Third one, I believe. And you're in a situation like this, where like a survivor, it's like at that like just barely point where you just barely hit them over the object. They keep crouching like this. What you should do is just rotate him around this loop to where he's about at this corner where you're standing here. So you just go for a straight shot. You're not actually shooting over something. You're just lining up the 4.8 meters to hit them. 
You do the same thing with Nemesis. If for some reason the survivor's just really good at ducking behind an object and you can't hit him, just W at him and force them to where there's like a line of sight directly between the two of you and then send the attack. Same thing with Nemesis. He really likes that, that flashbang thing. I suspect he knows about the bug if he keeps doing it that consistently. Oh, oh, he messed it up, though. He messed it up. Oh, God. That's scary. Okay, he's dead, too, thankfully. I knew Bill was dead. But I didn't know Alan was also the thing that's good. You use bugs in DBD. Are there actually bugs in DBD? Like actual like insects. There's flies on the cow tree. Right? Flies on the cow tree. Are there any other bugs in DBD? Like actual bugs? Toba there is? Oh yeah! There's the huge ones on Toba. Like the big space bugs. Right. Moss? Oh yeah! Because Haddonfield has the big bug zapper on one of the houses. Oh yeah. That is true. Cockroaches? Oh, are there? Does he also count? No. It's another bug hunt. Now, if there's a Starship Troopers, I'd agree with you. I agree with this. Yeah! He's on the other side. Yeah, he's cooked. He's cooked! Nice. Good shot. Good shot! Good shot! Alright, so, in terms of your main takeaways, a lot of this is actually kinda you. There's one prove and one good toolbox, but otherwise, like, these are things that you can improve on, which is good. That's that there's a good one. Match reviews are things that I can mostly give you tips on. Um, in terms of your main takeaways, the big one, the big one that I saw that was actually messing up your gameplay a lot was like, you need to know the difference between short tubes and long tubes. Like I said, for the Z-Morph, in terms of their control stations, short tubes will always connect to the first floor, longer tubes will always connect to the second floor. You seem to not know the difference to the point where you actively, like, have, like, a like a mid-game, like, anger expression over it. Um, that is a skill issue thing. Like, I don't mean that as a defense to you. Like, that literally, that is a knowledge check that you were actively failing. So, before going up a tube, think about, you know, which floor do I want to end up on? Look at the tube, see if it's the correct length, because if it's longer, it goes upstairs. If it's shorter, it goes downstairs. Um... So check that before you go, instead of just like climbing through as quick as possible, just not even thinking and then going, crap, well now I'm on the wrong place and now I'm confused, now I'm disoriented, now I don't know where I am. Like, look first, be a little patient and just look for the difference uh, between the tubes. Second is you seem to like overestimate your tail attacks length a lot. Um, it is only 4.8 meters. It is technically a little bit shorter than Nemesis, even in tier one and two. And you seem to like go for some really long shots that you don't really have any chance of hitting because there's just, you just don't have the range to hit it. Um, for reference, 4.8 meters is roughly the size of the red Corvette that appears on Batam, Mac Macmillan, stuff like that. Um, so try to get more familiar with that length because a lot of shots Especially when you have that, that movement speed penalty you get for missing as this character. You can't afford to be just like throwing tail attacks willy-nilly. Speaking of throwing tail attacks willy-nilly, um, your third takeaway is when you like end up in a situation like you were with Ace where the survivor's ducking or it's just a, a, like a, a tile with bad collision and you can't hit the tail attack, try to rotate them around to where you get clear line of sight and then go for the tail attack. If you can't hit them behind something, rotate them to where you can clearly see them and then go for the tail attack. Because... But all that Ace was doing was he knew exactly when to duck and was abusing it. By the way, tail attack is not reactable. <laughs> People think the tail attack is not reactable. One of the most liked comments on Puffalo's video where I did the, the learning series was, it's a little disingenuous to say that the tail attack is unreactable. Or to say the tail attack is actually reactable. That was one of the, the, the more liked comments on that video was, oh, it's disingenuous to say the tail attack is reactable. 
That's what the ace was doing to you the whole time. Anytime you'd go, every time you'd hear a quick, you he crouched. Quick, crouch, quick, crouch. He was botting you. And I mean that respectfully to the ace. Like he was playing well. He was doing the right thing. But it's because he was reacting to the tail, which I find so funny that people. Just because something's hard doesn't mean it's impossible. <laughs> like, come on. Come on, please. Just to react to it? Yeah. So, like, not only does that make that noise, that quick, but it also has a little, your tail actually, like, moves. Like, it goes from, like, a kind of, like, a kind of a stationary thing to, like, it, it, like, lifts up before it goes. So, like, there's also a visual to it, but, like, I guess because it's really hard, it doesn't exist. Just, just, that's a whole other soapbox. No, that's, I, 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 I preach that so much, Ambrosia. DPD players could not last a singular second in a fighting game because fighting games, like, fighting game moves, like you said, will be like 24 frames, 18 frames. Like, you would blow up. You would absolutely blow up. <laughs> if you were expected to actually do something with quick reaction time, you would actually blow up. That's why I don't care about the the, the Z-more tail attack because, like, literally, I'm like I've played fighting games my whole life where I'm expected to react to things at half the speed or, or like twice as quick, <laughs> twice as quick of a wind up. So that here people will be like, "Oh, it's you know, it's so terrible." It's like not terrible. You just it's just really hard, and you just don't want to. Which is fine. You could have the opinion that you don't want to, that you want to take the game that seriously, that something that intense in a game that's seen as casual is is a bit much but like it's not unreactable and you're lying you're lying to sur sur suit your preferences yeah exactly another great fps is you gotta be you gotta be like the moment that guy comes around the corner you gotta be ready you gotta be pre-aiming you gotta be leaning you gotta be in the zone ready because if your reaction team's bad you're gone you're dead <laughs> like you're 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 off the board DVD players just live in this little sphere and bubble where they've been handheld with really strong perks and really strong items and not expected to actually be good at the game. That when the game is actually like, no, this is going to be really hard for you to dodge. You gotta, you better be ready to dodge it. They're, everybody's minds explode. <laughs> like, they're, they're, they, they blow up. They mentally cannot handle it. They mentally cannot handle it. Like, it's just, it's unreal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was a whole soapbox. That had nothing to do with this match review. Um, yeah, also, I, not really a fourth takeaway, but I want to add that, like, you were dropping Chase so much that I think it was to your detriment. Especially when your only slowdown for a while there was Eruption because they weren't cracking the play thing because of the thing I told you where the motion tracker just kind of blows up oblivious. Um, you weren't going for downs, which is the downs were the only way Eruption would proc. So the fact that you were leaving Chase constantly meant that your one slowdown wasn't even going off very much. So. I would have committed a little bit more so you can get more eruption procs.